And it's three o'clock. So let us begin this information session for the multilateral uh, joint R&D uh, project. I am your MC. I am Kim Jong-Wan of Kaya. Thank you very much for joining us today at this hot and humid weather. And today's event is to provide information as to the multilateral joint R&D program run and co-operated by the Ministry of Land Infrastructure and Transport and the Kaya. Today, we are joined by Dr. Debatler, his department is responsible for global R&D in the area of uh, land infrastructure and transport. We are also joined by Ms. Kim Jong-un, Science and Technology Policy Officer from the delegation of the European Union to Korea. And we are also joined by Professor Song Jae-min of the Gracie School of Environment at Seoul National University. And we are also joined by Professor Yoo Jae-min of the Department of Smart Mobility Engineering at uh, Kangu University. Now I would like to invite Mr. Kim Yan Zhou, Deputy Director from the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport for his opening remarks. Good afternoon. Thank you, Kim Yan Zhou. I'm responsible for the global R&D programs. The Office of uh, Future Strategy is responsible for all the R&D budget and R&D projects. And as you can see, in the pamphlet that we have distributed, that we are responsible for various types of international joint projects, such as multilateral type and bilateral type, as well as the outbound and the global leading technology R&D. My boss was supposed to be here today, but he has another meeting to attend to. That is why I am here on behalf of him. I would like to thank the all the researchers here joining us expressing their keen interest in this international joint project. The government has announced the strategic R&D plan for the next 10 years. In line with this, my ministry has established the R&D strategy and plan to be teamed up with the global leading countries as one part of the national R&D and international strategic R&D plan, we are pursuing multilateral joint R&D programs as well as the bilateral joint R&D programs. And we, your feedback and opinion will be very much appreciated. Uh, this will serve as a great resources for us to further develop our policies and support schemes for the researchers. I hope that researchers through today's event will have a keen understanding in the multilateral joint R&D programs. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Song Jemi and Professor Uzumin, as well as Ms. Kim Joo of the EU delegation to Korea. Thank you so much. As mentioned by the director, at Kaya, we've been pursuing various international cooperation R&D projects since 2023, aiming to pro promote international joint research in domestic land infrastructure and transport technologies and secure cutting edge technologies. The Horizon Europe Partnership Programs we'll discuss today are the Driving Urban Transition, DUT, and Clean Energy Transition, CET Partnerships, there are multilateral joint research programs open to non-Horizon Europe member countries. Kaya has been participating in DUT since last year after consulting with the program secretariat, and we are joining CET as a new program this year. Today's agenda. Is as follows. We will start with the introduction to the Horizon Europe program. And introduction to the new project, new program, followed by two professors sharing their experiences with last year's DUT all selection and evaluation process. Um, 
And then we will move on to a Q&A session. We have the Zoom link. And here are the entire session will be run in Korean, but at Zoom, it's all English. Simultaneous interpretation is being provided. And today's uh, program and the session will be uploaded at, on YouTube later. Now I would like to turn to Ms. Kim Joo Kyung, Science and Technology Policy Officer from the EU Delegation to Korea for an overview of the Horizon Europe program. Please give a warm round of applause. I'm Kim Joo Young. I am Science and Technology Policy Officer from the EU Delegation to Korea. Very nice to meet you all. As I expected, we have more male participants than female participants uh, since this event is hosted by Molid, and uh, many of you would expect to see a male presenter instead of uh, this female presenter from the EU delegation. Uh, these days, I have given presentations as to the Horizon Europe program quite a lot. Mostly, uh, most recently, I went to Korea University for this kind of information session in June. And as for the government funded research institute, I went to Daejeon and uh, I went to Ulsan, Daegu, Gwangju. And uh, none of you have attended any such event. Uh, welcome to today's program. Uh, I can go thoroughly through this project for one full hour. But due to time constraints, I have only 20 minutes. So rather than uh, trying to have a full understanding, I'd like to ask you to listen to my presentation to have a high level understanding as to the program. And if we have any further questions, and questions for clarification, please reach out to me or you can look up the internet for further information. Before I begin this kind of presentation, I ask the basic level of understanding. But thanks to the survey conducted by Kaya, I can see your level of understanding. Is there anyone who has a new certain level of knowledge and understanding as to this Horizon Europe program? Uh, now I see, well, you are not really exposed to Horizon Europe program. That is why uh, I will provide you a very basic level of a presentation. You would not be able to understand what this is about. And uh, only by looking at the name, you wouldn't be able to understand what it's about. But it's very vague, vague and ambiguous. You would wonder, what is this about? So let us jump right into the main subject. It's been, since ten, it's been 10 years since I, Horizon, I, I joined the EU delegation. And uh, the most frequently asked question is, why do I have to do this R&D with Europe? Since, well, Korean people to study abroad, mostly in North America, uh, their networking is focused on North American region. Why do I have to do this, do this international project with a European entity? And as you know, well, Europe has a population of half a billion, about 6% of the global population. However, the share of the global R&D of Europe is 17%, one seven. And about one fourth of all high quality scientific publications come from Europe. And uh, this slide captures the gist of my entire presentation. This is the structure of the Horizon Europe. And in the middle, you can see the red circled portion. This is something you have to understand. There are three pillars, one, two, and three in Horizon Europe. The first pillar is about excellent science. And here you can see ERC, European Research Council. Well, this is for the fundamental research. 
and uh, Mari Curie. This is for the human exchange. And pillar two in the middle is the area where Korean researchers can see some familiarity. This is International Global Multilateral Joint Research Program. So what you will apply for is one of the areas on the pillar two because this allows multilateral joint research program. So when we are talking about Horizon Europe, your participation is not in all the pillars, but only in pillar two. Pillar three is for innovation, innovate, innovative Europe or commercialization of uh, various research ideas. But as I mentioned, uh, Pillar 2 is the area you should be more interested in. There are various items, and there are six clusters from health all the way to food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. And for each cluster, there will be a call. That is why I'd like to ask you to pay more attention to this one. A joint research center, but this is for policy research. But joint research center is where you can get some resources. That is why I include this item in this red circle as well. Like Korea, EU does not um, announce a project almost on a yearly basis, but this is a seven year budget. Have you ever heard of FPE? This is the ninth FPE of Europe. It's probably first FPE started back in 1986 or five. Now it's seventh. FPE 7, but the A FPE was dubbed as Horizon 2020, and the ninth FPE was dubbed as Horizon Europe, rather vague and ambiguous name. And this program covers seven years from 2021 all the way through 2027. So about 140 trillion Korean won of budget has been allocated to this program. In pillar two, counts for almost half of the budget. International cooperation has been highlighted so extensively. Well, in Korea, our the budget was cut down by 15%. And at the EU, it was not really a bad news because with the cut in the R&D budget in Korea, researchers went out to look for international projects and international joint research project budget has increased. Then why do we have to consider international cooperation and joint research program? As you know, the Europe has been uh, specialized in multilateral joint research program. And the reason why we have to do this international cooperation is because we want to tackle together global societal issues, but we are facing global issues. That is why we need a global talent to tackle these challenges. We need to put together the best of the brightest in the world, their expertise and resources. This is the emphasis of the EU. As you know, uh, Korea uh, was able to take part in uh, this type of uh, project hosted by the EU. And most of the budget for such a joint program uh, should come from uh, the Ministry of Technology and ICT. And the Mozilla also had 
some budget to food type of joint international research project. Uh, for pillar one and pillar three, both Korean researchers can take part in as a third country, but as for pillar two, Korea can be, um, Korea will be, become an associated member. That is why I highlighted pillar two, because in this case, the funding um, comes from the relevant organization as well. Uh, if you take a look at the association to Horizon Europe, well, there would be 20 associated countries. But these countries cover five continents. And uh, well, if you become an associated member, you, know, you would enjoy more because that is why we strongly recommend this career to take part in as an associated partner. And prior to rights in Europe, only European countries can become an associated member countries, but with the Horizon Europe, um, non European countries can also become associated members. And the Korea is one of them. And Canada and New Zealand have already signed an agreement to become associated members, and Korea will be the first ever associated non European associated member. Japan and Singapore and Australia are also negotiating their terms. And with the Brexit, the UK is not the Horizon Europe members anymore. However, when it comes to R&D, well, you cannot do it all by yourself. That is why UK has joined Horizon Europe as an associated member. Uh, so from 2024, they work with us as an associated member, and uh, there are is an ongoing negotiation with the Switzerland. I believe Switzerland will also become an associated country from 2025. So, Horizon Europe again in 2021, and prior to 2021. A policy discussion to invite those six countries has already begun even prior to that. And in 2022, Korea expressed its interest to become an associated member. And after two years of negotiations and endless meetings and official negotiations this year, March in Bristol, negotiations were concluded. And uh, well, the working level detailed discussions are ongoing and the ratification is being discussed. And our goal is to have Korea as an associated member from 2025 for Pillar 2. So far, so good. Yeah. I think what I am keep track of, I am keeping good track of this high. So what is the difference between non-member or non-associated member and the associated member status? I mentioned that even as a third country, that you can join the pillar one or pillar three. So with that, you you should secure you funding from the Korean side, but since Korea is an associated member for Pillar 2, Korea will contribute its share. Then the, then the researchers can receive funds directly from the program. So the Korean budget should be secured by yourself if Korea is not an associated member. But if uh, Korea makes a decision to fund only two projects, and if we have five applications from Korea, then three would not even get a chance to go through any process. And uh, there is a discrepancy, there would be some discrepancy between the timeline, in the timeline between Korea and this EU program were not perfectly aligned. 
But since Korea is an associated member, once you are selected, then you can receive the funding directly from the program. Of course, there would be some cons in addition to this prize because, well, the, the cost settlement should be done within the EU system. But if you have any experience in the international project and cooperation program, then uh, you will gain some more experiences and uh, you will have a better understanding. But I fully understand that there are some concerns, outstanding concerns. And as for the contribution, I cannot tell you how much Korea will contribute. But as we explained, in partnership with the Ministry of Technology and ICT, Information and uh, information communication and technology that uh, researchers can be reassured. Uh, if there is any gap, uh, we will go through some consortium coordination. For example, if uh, the Korean side spends only half a billion or 55 billion, uh, while overseas research program, overseas share of the research spent like twice of that amount or three times that amount, some international coordination. So that will be easily settled and addressed. And so you can be reassured. This means that a Korea's contribution to the EU horizon, Europe, will be spent entirely on the research activities of the of Korean researchers. Six associated member countries, at least for them, the entire contribution will go to their researchers. I mentioned that this is a consortium and this is multilateral research project. That means that at least three countries should pay part in this project, at least three. There's member states and uh, associated member states. That is what is called consortium, multilateral one. Coordinator refers to PI. A third country can never be a PI since Korea is an associated member that you can serve as a PI. And almost all calls are accessible by the current researchers on the pillar too. And this is for the government. I showed you six clusters. And each cluster has a program committee. It's not like that uh, the EU will unilaterally determine which projects you know, which items will be presented as a potential uh, project and programs and to the researchers. And although Korea will be an observer, Korea can take part in the program committee as part of the Horizon Europe governance. So these are the benefits you can enjoy and advantages you can enjoy as an associated member. Time-wise, I will highlight several key points. I told you there are six clusters in Pillar 2. And they have half, more than half of the entire budget. You can see how much is allocated to each cluster? The Korean researchers are mostly interested in energy mobility, uh, climate, uh, digital industry and space, but these two clusters have the most budget. And I believe those who are here would have a heightened level of interest in these areas. Now, we are going further into details. A partnership. You can see cluster five on the screen at the bottom. Clean energy transition and driving urban transition. 
these two partnerships are the partnerships um, the Kaya step was referring to. So the type of project is called the partnerships. Researchers can join the EU's project, but partnerships refer to the research academia and the industry partnerships in order to come up with the unnecessary part. There are 49 European partnerships. And the two at the bottom, the CET and GUT, uh, these are the partnerships Kaya is taking part in and is to take part in. Mm, we will get back to this later. And all in all, we will have 10 new European partnerships. And this is the EU missions. As you can see, this is not about concrete research areas, but these are areas which have a direct impact on the lives of the citizens. This is why the EU has set forth these tasks or these projects as missions. I explain all these because but, but these will be the titles to be used for a call announcement or call notice. The class six partnerships, missions, all different categories will be used and referred to. That is why I'd like to give you a brief introduction into all different terminologies. Horizon Europe is a seven year program. I initially didn't understand, didn't quite understand. So things are changing so rapidly. Then do we have to do this project for whopping seven years? But as I delved deeper into this, I came to see that the seven year framework of Horizon Europe is like a package, but well, budget is tightly secured for this program. But this is something we will safeguard no matter what for at least seven years. So this is a seven year package and we have this strategic plan. From 2021 through 2024, from 2025 to 2027, strategic plan two and strategic plan one. So this sets the policy direction. And below that is work program, WP. You need to be well aware of this. This refers to projects in Korea. It's on an annual basis. March this year, the shipbuilding project and the work programs was announced, but in Korea, I'm sorry, in Europe, we have work programs. Uh, now we are in work program 2023 and 2024, and the next one would be 2025 and 2025. Horizon 2020 work program um, covered three years. So sometimes it's for one year, two years, or three years at times. And below that is call for proposals. <laughs> I know, and it's quite confusing, and glaucoma is kicking in. So just have a big picture. That will do more than enough. What you need to know is work programs. As a researcher, you have to understand whether well, this is relevant for you. Horizon Europe, and there are six clusters, and 2023-2024, each call has a different year. The call is for two years period, and after that, the calls for proposals will uh, be introduced um, sequentially over two years. You can refer to this later at your leisure. It's all in English, but so it might be a bit com it might look a bit complicated. So Pella two, the main work programs, and the Pella two is typically made up of thirteen parts. So what parts there are in general annexes, 
of this, we have set out rules which apply across the work program, such as standard admissibility conditions and eligibility criteria, selection and award criteria. So uh, you can look up the relevant information you're looking for. In the missions and partnerships, these are the terminologies we have to bear in mind. And I told you that work program is for one year, two years, or three years. And work programs, if the work program is for 2023 and 2024, then hundreds of pages of documents will be released, so-called cold text, toward the end of 2022. So call about two page document would be created and distributed. What kind of outcome is expected? The size of budget expected, uh, expected the budget. So per each cluster, the kind of document will be made available. If you want to go for 2023 or 2024 work program, you should refer to this kind of a booklet, hundreds of pages, uh, which will be published toward the end of 2022. So the entire package will be released and disclosed to the public. So for individual call, you have to look up for any announcement to, to be made. So here you can see under work programs at destination. So if you open the call text, there is a big destination under that. So you can see um, the detailed work programs and call proposals, general annexes, annexes I already mentioned. This refers to the eligibility. So explanation for eligibility, you can see here. So far, automatic funding was not available. But since Korea is an associated member, the automatic funding is available. And on the right side, you can see the consortium roles. You can be the beneficiary as a main partner. You can use you can get and use the budget from the European Commission so you can see the consortium rules and responsibilities for some types of actions in the call number you can see all these most of the Actions are the research and innovation actions, or IA. We talk about technology readiness. So, three to seven or eight would be called RIA, a prototype or nearing commercialization would be innovation action and coordination and support actions. Is referred to policy making or international cooperation. So, not a research in and of itself, but a coordination or support type of actions. So, these are the descriptions and categories. We can skip the next slide. Now, another important point this is a word criteria. Use criteria, most of the time would be made of these three items. Well, in Korea, there are 15 different items for evaluation, but there are three big criteria. Pillar 1, I mentioned, but it was ERC, that it focuses only on ERC, but it's about fundamental research, but most of the projects in the total score of 15, each item would be allocated five points. And some weighting would be given but anyway the perfect score would be 15 five each and if each item has the lowest required points if excellence is only two then you cannot pass and you cannot move on to the next item you will need to get at least three points for each item if you got nine then you will not be able to move on to the next stage because you should get in total 10 points. It's not easy, but 
even more difficult to make things even more difficult you will need to get at least 13 or 14 score out of 15 you know, to be selected so 15 percent on average of the applicants would be selected and as for horizon 2020 although korea was a third country, not an associated member, but a uh, consortium, including a Korean researcher, uh, was selected 23%, and not an average 15%, just because probably uh, the quality of the Korean researchers. So all this information is available at the EU funding and tenders portal. If you enter Horizon Europe at Google search window, then you can see all the manuals and all the relevant information. All the information is available on the website. Once you are selected, then you should sign this grant agreement. So you have to uh, elaborate here on the starting date, project duration, milestones, and deliverables, and the budget categories, and co-sharing, close eligibility rules, and so on. And the, so the party to this agreement would be the coordinator of the consortium and the European Commission. And between and among consortium partners should sign a consortium agreement. Now, within that agreement, you have to specify how to address the intellectual property rights and so on. So, this is my the end of my presentation. Uh, it would be okay for me to address any questions right now. So before, uh, while it's still fresh in your mind, uh, please ask any questions if you have any burning question. So uh, do we have to register our subs to the Horizon Europe? In order to be part of the consortium, uh, you need to have uh, this organization code, but the registration process itself is not really complicated. This is something uh, required, but as long as you submit the required document, then you can be registered, but you need to have the, your organization code on it, then you can be a member of the consortium. Now, what about the search of the potential partners? So, um, the, how about the partnership and the forming the consortium? Do we have to uh, work with any organizations with the organization code at Horizon Europe? Uh, yeah, those organizations, your European partners, can also register themselves uh, with getting this registration uh, organization code. But uh, I told you that uh, you need to work, uh, this consortium should be composed of uh, three countries, mm -hmm. Korea, associated member, Canada, associated member, and Germany, a EU member country. So those three countries can form a consortium. Uh, But uh, three is the minimum. At times, the consortium would be composed of 10 countries or 50 countries to a large scale scientific project, like uh, to observe uh, the universe in the desert. Well, this type of project would uh, bring together the talents around the globe. So the absence of the lack of network it would be your greatest concern for now. But uh, whenever there is a call, you can use the partner search at the bottom of the call document. Then, uh, well, through that, well, you can uh, provide the information about your entity or your research organization. So I think about that feature is the most useful one. 
getting a coat. Gender equality is、uh, one of the most important values at Horizon Europe. That is why the businesses in Korea should、uh, take that into consideration and to be very versed in this field of gender equality. Well, that's something you have to consider. It should be done at、uh, your organization level. The researchers, institutes, or universities.、Um, at some point, while、well, you have your、uh, association when it comes to gender、um, equality, but businesses should take this into consideration. Further, I don't think there is any question. Then I will wrap. Up my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jiang Ken, for your elaborate presentation. Now, I'd like to turn to researcher Che Yu for his introduction into this new program, as well as the existing program we are offering. Good afternoon. I am Che Yu of Korea. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today, I'd like to talk about two partnerships, which global collaboration, collaboration research and development program in land infrastructure and transportation participate. And I'd like to also talk about the DUT and CUT. The announcement recently released. I will also brief you on the brief timeline. And as well as the questions raised, as we collected through the pre survey. This is the overview of the strategic plan. And the strategic R and D plan has started back in 2023. We prepare ourselves for like the framework act on science and ICT. Last year, we set up a comprehensive plan for the R and D in the field of land infrastructure and transport. But、uh, well, this highlighted the importance of strengthening international cooperation. So we have already laid around the full the international budget. But this strategic plan will be ten year plan, and、uh, well, this will be updated every two years. And、uh, let me turn to this global R and D international cooperation project. There will be all different names, but this means the same. And we started the work about the joint R and D from this year. We focus more on international collaboration R and D programs, bilateral R and D between Korea and the UK is well underway. In addition to that,、uh, we are pursuing international research with European countries as well as the North American countries for next year and after that. And as for our bilateral R and D program, this is what we are doing today. Horizon Europe program, EUT, EUT, EUT. Well, this is part of our multilateral joint R and D program. Initiative, but now we are also planning a lot of other international joint research with ASEAN countries, and、uh, we are also exploring the global leading technology or the projects. And the new project I will explain to you all the category by the Horizon Europe Partnership Program, the UT driving the urban transition and plan project transition. Let's give you a brief overview of this multilateral collaborative venture research. This aims at strengthening scientific and technological competitiveness in land infrastructure and transport to secure beyond cutting edge technologies by conducting. About research with leading overseas institutions from various countries. This year, we are taking part in 
DUV, and FGO rehabilitate body in CEP. And then there are various programs on the pillar too. It's, we are the third body. That's why we were not able to take part in the need of, in the limited scope. And, and due to such a restraint, restraint uh, we decided to take part in the UG. But, uh, uh, from not sure members, we will take part in the UG as well. You can see the UG case, but this is after the bilateral international joint research. So at the bottom, you see Project Consortia with countries A, B, C, D, etc. So in each country has different, each country has a different number of research organizations and organizations, and a consortium is needed for the program. Then has an agreement, agreement which is each country's funding agency. Well, it will be higher in the case of Korea for a budget execution. Execution. If country B has two research institutions, the country's funding agency allocates the budget to each institution. So this is how budget is spent in each of the member countries and the associated member countries. The fact that the UT project selected for Korea involves both Hangu University and Kai. So it's by pushing this case, all the Koreans, since we have to assign the contract to Iris, Hangu University is the main participant. If these two uh, universities would uh, be the main participants, then one would represent the uh, other. Industry, academia, research institutions like the partnership program projects form to social with research institutions from participating countries. You selected, and then you can get the funding. No, Kim mentioned that the position should be composed of the two countries full with the position. And there are other requirements, the two important requirements. The first is that First, we must form a consortium with research institutions from the West to Horizon Europe participating countries. For Korea to take part in, two EU member countries should be participating countries like uh, Belgium or Germany. Japan and Taiwan would also take part in the EU. So, if you form a consortium with both Taiwan or Japan, then you would apply the two EU member countries. So, at least the two Horizon Europe member countries should be in the, uh, the consortium. If uh, Korea forms a consortium with one EU member country, that doesn't work. So Korea, Japan, and one EU member country, uh, this would make it the number three. But uh, since only one Horizon Europe member country, this is not uh, uh, available. And note that, please note that the types of institutions put it vary by country. Some don't support private companies, while others don't support universities. So, when forming a consortium, you must check the types of supported institutions for each country in the guide. Last year, 183 projects applied to the UT, but 33 projects couldn't even be evaluated due to errors in consortium formation and country-specific participation restrictions during the eligibility review. One thing, didn't even get a chance to go through the first phase. 
So the data have to be confined. We need to be extra careful to avoid such issues this year. That's why I like ask to refer to the information. The patient can be as a lead or a joint institution in the consortium. And the Korea was a participant in the project selected. And more than two domestic, two or more domestic research institutions can take part in one consortium. But one will be named as a lead participant for the second So, citation. Uh, the Korean relevant law would be applicable here. For example, the researchers and professional researchers and professors uh, restrictions. Uh, so you can hold only up to uh, three positions as PI and only up to five positions as a project participant. And this is the requirement you have to meet in Korea. And for-profit organization, the R&D burden should be borne by that for-profit organization. And technology fee will be imposed, and that this kind of requirement should be fully complied. So let me review on the overall timeline, as well as the process for the notification. And this is this year. September this year, the announcement has been made for DUT. And the announcement will be made for C for the end of this month. And the 15 page or so pre proposal should be submitted by November this year. Meet November. And pre proposals are evaluated from December to January of the following month. So proposals are submitted from February to April. And for pro proposals are supposed to be submitted only by those who have passed the first round. Then the application is to be submitted by the end of March in the case of CET. The full proposals are evaluated from May to June or April to June. As for the review and evaluation process will be explained by the investors all. The selection results are notified in July. So, your evaluation will be completed in July. Next, July. The signing the agreement will take place September next year or only the year after. Because uh, the intercompany agreement signing negotiation should take place, in depth discussion is required for such people. So the project advancement will be 2026, although the whole 2024, this is called 2024, the project will begin only in 2026. This is the overall timeline. I will elaborate on this later. Yeah. Now, let me turn to the DUT partnership. This is to implement the European deal with regard to the global climate change and to develop and respond to various urban issues of gender. So this is a research program in the area of urban complexity, climate change, mobility, innovation, and smart cities. And this program will go on from 2022 to 2028. 
66 organizations like government agencies and funding organizations such as the agency from 29 countries are taking part in with a budget of almost 100 billion Korean won. So each country's funding organization in consultation with the government will allocate the budget. So are three uh, topics of research supported by the UT, Positive Energy District, Fabulous City, and CUE Circular Urban Economics. Out of these three, we support only one topic in 15 minutes uh, last year. So we decided to support the positive energy. Study. The number of applicants was not that many, and then John was selected in July. We decided to select and support 15 minutes for the UP and as for CET. Uh, we will begin to support this next year. The countries in red, but these are important countries in blue. Uh, Brazil, Finland, Japan, Korea, Switzerland, and Taiwan. They are associated with the countries or non member countries. Uh, uh, in the booklet, uh, Finland is in red, I'm sorry. Way, if you are to form a concession with any of those five countries, then you need to engage at least two countries. So if you involve any countries in red and blue, then you need to engage at least to two countries in red. That's the principle you have to stick to. So Brazil, Finland, Japan, Switzerland, and Taiwan, you are to work with any of these countries that you should engage at least two countries. Korea was the only Asian country, but this year we have Japan, Taiwan. But if you have a network in Japan, I believe uh, this might be quite helpful. And now here are the both conditions for the institutions. The subject of uh, support is the common support of the international okay. and the research time period is up to 36 months from the commencement of the research. So it can be for 36 months and it can be as short as 24 months or 27 months or 18 months. Typically, it's 18 months or longer than that. And as I mentioned, the small picture is the 15 minute city only. If you look at the, if you take a look at the stuff topics, you can see how to enhance the urban mobility, urban mobility system, urban mobility transition. And uh, well, this will definitely uh, engage transportation system and accessibility, proximity policy, and so on. And as for the for 2025, uh, 3 million, 300 million Korean won in total. We do not know how many. The project will be selected. Like the total is 300 million. So, DUT uh, project, the maximum support would budget would be uh, 350 million won per project. So for a three year period. Mm -hmm. 
but let me be such as trying to propose exactly the maximum budget. Uh, when we present it, uh, more budget is always better. And keeping the characteristics of the multilateral joint research in initial stages, government support budget is inevitably limited. So I'd like to ask for your understanding. So everyone to benefit, we would appreciate it if you could propose within 300 million Korean won, if possible. The important point is that you need to send an email to Korea after submitting the pre-proposal because you submit your pre-proposal to the DA secretariat only. Korea needs to know who submitted and how many to prepare for eligibility review, evaluate recruitment, budget allocation. That's why please make sure to email us after you submitted your pre-proposal. This is the link. Uh, about DUT call 2024, DUT match, map, making platform and driving urban transitions partnership. And then we also have the email address of the Kai International Exchange team as well as the DUT announcement staff. The funding opportunities menu, but you can see call 2024 and that matchmaking platform. So if you click this link, and then you can see this new updated website, as somebody asked it, here you can search organizations by each country, you can report out by countries, by research subjects, so on. The matchmaking platform, about 1,500 researchers as of now, and as for 15 minutes city, about 1,000 researchers have been registered. Well, in Korean research is about 15, and the international research is about one, all in all, about 1,000. So you can uh, have a chat, and uh, you can even have uh, a video conference on this platform, one alone video conferencing. So please make the most of this platform. Of all, we will arrange some opportunities and here. You can get the most information. Next, I'd like to turn to CET partnership program. Energy transition partnership. This is the first time that we are participating in this partnership. And this is the digest of Europe's energy supply. And then to realize that global carbon neutral supply by 2050. And then from 34 countries, 68 organizations have taken part in it with a budget of up to 100, um, sorry, 200 billion Korean won. The higher budget, but uh, this covers more core topics. Here we have 10 core topics. Call modules. More call modules. And now they are categorized into seven TRIs or tradition initiatives. Call module 10. TRI 7. Clean energy integration in the built environment. In topic, Korea report. This is the only topic we are going to support. So oh, please refer to four module time. The topics were excluded as they are less relevant to the land and infrastructure and transport sector. So it's TR7 in 10. As for the support conditions for the research institutions, uh, basically, well, the those who can receive this support will be the same. The research development period is up to 36 months. The topic to be supported would be clean energy integration in the world environment. TR7 or C10. Integration in the VR7 is integration in the built environment. And the South topics or challenges are, as you can see on the screen, the proposal should be prepared in consideration of these challenges. And the annual budget for this one is up to 300 million Korean won. So, all in all, 900 billion Korean won. I don't know how many projects. 
there would be to be selected, but this is the level of budget allocated for the CT, and there is no cap on the project support. But as I mentioned, in order to ensure the maximum participation, please make sure that your proposal to have the budget of up to or below 300 million, otherwise the budget is not significant. But according to the researchers who have taken part in this kind of international project, uh, this is such a genuine opportunity for them to expand their into a research network that they can have a lot of in a so-called global research market, you can enhance your competitiveness and you can improve your technology competitiveness. This is a way to raise the level of competencies of the researchers. So even, even though you would start small, this will become something extremely efficient. So this is kind of a small step to prepare yourself to get ready for a bigger event to form a consortium, how to write a proposal, how to go through the review process, and what are the processes you have to go through. Of course, the research market itself is of greatest importance. So much of platform, the interface so be slightly small, but uh, the basic features and functionalities are the same. You can just search. So you can sort out by countries, by topics, that there are various national level events, such as technology exchange, introduction, and an overview of technologies. So please refer to this. And as I mentioned, one on one video conferencing is available on this platform. As for CTTR 7, for each topic, there is a responsible country and a responsible staff. Uh, there is a staff responsible for TR7. And uh, there is another one responsible for the announcement as well as matchmaking. So uh, please refer to these responsible staff members if you have any further questions or queries. This is the overall timeline. Uh, let me compare these two. So, uh, the announcement for the Department of Quality is September 7th, 2nd, and as well as the 19th of September next week. And as for well TUT, the information session uh, was done yesterday. And, uh, and the CET's information session will take place tomorrow. So please refer to CET's website as well as the matchmaking platform. So those, uh, the research is in the built environment. Yeah, yeah but uh, please refer to the timeline. And the pre-proposal is to be submitted by 8 p.m. Korean time. November 14th, as for CD partnership, the 21st of November, uh, 9 p.m. Korean time. So there is a due date and time. Please stick to the time. And the first round evaluation will be completed for UT by February and by January in the case of CET. And the full proposal to be submitted by April 24th next year. In the absence, uh, with the introduction of the summer time, the time would be slightly different. And for CET, well, the full proposal should be submitted by the last day of March. There might be some system error or system breakdown, and you might have an extreme event of a blackout or blackout. That is why I'd like to ask you to complete a preparation of the document and approve proposal one week prior to the deadline. And the second round of evaluation will take place until July next year for DUT. And the selection to be made in July next year and the commencement of the project will differ depending on the consortium. 
the last but not least. I'd like to share with you the preliminary survey. I'd like to share with you the preliminary survey. 64 respondents, 40% of private organization, the university, 31%, and government sponsored research centers, 19%, and others, 8%. And then other than 10, none of the respondents have any international research project experience. That means uh, we are more or less the same in terms of the sonic point in the level of understanding. Second is the partnership program awareness is slightly below average at 2.5 points, slightly lower. Only one person is well aware of the Horizon Europe partnership program. And except for one person, we have plans to participate in new projects. I can include those with existing European network is average level at 2.9 points out of the scale of five. So this is the area we need to work harder. Regarding programs of interest, the UT 67%, although multiple responses were allowed, CP was very represented. And three inquiry questions for the proposals, whether the proposals should be in English with a special way to overseas indigenous and so on. The language should be in English. The proposal should be written in English. Once elected at least up to 36 months, you will participate in international joint research. Businesses, but I like to strongly recommend you to hire a part-time staff, and if that's too difficult, then you can use Google Translator or ChatGPT and other AI technologies. We felt that I have such a responsibility to help various organizations to uh, take part in this joint research program. So the, we will uh, arrange an ice-breaking session. And so one, briefly introducing what our technology and their areas of interest in three to five minutes per organization, uh, inviting about uh, 20 um, Korean domestic research centers sooner or later. And as for CBT, there will be an information session, information session so-called lunch event. The current time 5 p.m. tomorrow for two hours, and after that, there will be a technology matchmaking session for about four hours. So one on one networking session will be arranged tomorrow. So those who are interested in CET, but please make sure to take part in tomorrow for the lunch event. This is the end of my presentation. Uh, about the selection criteria, the social information process, and the social writing method. These will be explained in the subsequent presentations. Please listen carefully to the useful information derived from the experiences of our two professors. Uh, I will open the floor for the question. Okay, so if you have any question, uh, the floor is yours. I am Gabriel Directly from the South of Wallet. Not just multilateral the international joint research programs, but we are talking about international collaboration or indeed. There's a Wallet and Kyar have been preparing various international cooperation exchange and programs. The researchers uh, you are the one who will make the most of this kind of uh, policy and programs. We are keenly interested in what you are interested in. So that is why please make sure to take part in the survey after today's session. Although we are talking about uh, multilateral cooperation, if there is a area or any countries you have in mind a full bilateral cooperation project, please uh, state that clearly in the survey. Thank you.
So we will have a Q&A session at the end of all the presentations. Thank you very much for such a passionate uh, presentation. So we are seriously behind the schedule. And now I'd like to turn to um, the DUD jury. The only ancient jury member of last year's CUT evaluation process, uh, Seoul National University's Professor Chemin Song. I am We're starting a smart city, consistent with smart city. I am teaching students there at the Bridge School of Environment at the University of Seoul National University. You might wonder how she was made the evaluate uh, was a member of the evaluation board, but I think while Kaya recommended to several members and I was selected to be part of this evaluation process. Before, before I joined this process, I didn't know much about the DUT, so I joined humility and I came to see that I was the only one who took part in as a review board or committee. And today, I'd like to share with you what I felt and what I learned with the process, as mentioned previously. Um, there are three big topics or research themes, and uh, I was a member of the evaluation board for the 15 minute city. The uh, evaluation process uh, is composed of uh, two different stages. The first round and the second round. I took part in the second round. Yeah, as you to see in the application guidelines, there are two different tracks. The first is ROA, research oriented. The second one is ROA, innovation oriented. I put up in ROA, so I do not know how ROA process is. Done. But I think that's more like the commercialization. That's my understanding. So most of the ROA focused on research institutes or universities. There were about 25 experts invited to full evaluation. And other than the going one by one for each of these three topics. For the 15 minute city as a whole, we, the entire panel, went through the evaluation. If you go to the website, although it's not stated on the website, so you can see some statistics as to the evaluation outcome. And as somebody briefly mentioned, in the pre-proposal, 183 applications and applicants for these three topics. The most popular one was 15-minute city. And through the eligibility test, the 150 applicants were subject to first round evaluation and only 70 applicants and proposals may to the second round evaluation. And, and finally, 42 proposals were selected. Yeah. Well, the competition is even fiercer in Korea domestically. Out of 42, 20 projects were suggested for 15 minutes city. As you can see, the scale of funding is the largest for the 15 minutes city. That is why we have more projects for the 15 minutes city. And as mentioned, I was part of the ROA panel. I, I was not part of the ROA panel. So I do not know the exact breakdown 
ROA panel um, went through 40 different proposals. And as for the procedure, it's quite similar to what was already elaborated on proposal submission. So when I said proposal, this means a full proposal because I was involved in the second round of evaluation. So only after the first round, the outcome was released. And only after uh, the feedback was provided to the applicant, a uh, full proposal was uh, prepared and submitted by April 30th. And there are certain word limits, but uh, to my understanding, it was about 40 page to 60 page long in the case of the full proposal. So Alison, you are selected as an expert panel member. Then you would be assigned later by two and four proposals. And to my recollection, I reviewed five to ten full proposals once you are assigned with the full proposals for each topic. Uh, you have to write up and write down your level of expertise and understanding if there is any area of conflict of interest. For example, if uh, the proposal comes from um, the same university with you, with your association, then in the case where well, you should say no to the review, and you have uh, about one month to review. I didn't do any screen capture. It's quite similar to the Korean way of review. You log on to the online platform, and for each proposal, you do the rating and evaluation. And then you can refer to the first round um, review results, kind of a comment received at the schools they got. And then you can type it in your own comment and uh, your own. Um, Writings to the proposal, and there would be a panel meeting for three days in hybrid world. And those who are based in Europe would be there in person, and others would join remotely. In each project, 15 minutes of time is allocated, and this is kind of a coordination and adjustment. The final school is, and we'll be learning on this later. In the outcome, the final school will be set. And this is not something which has the final say, to my understanding, uh, to borrow some expressions and terminologies. The outcome is used as database for the funding agencies in their decision to fund projects. Forced of ranking would be considered, however, I think um, the country by country allocation and distribution would be also considered. That's my personal idea, understanding. And as for evaluation criteria, as mentioned, this is quite extensively uh, described in the guideline. I think the criteria is pretty much the same, whether it's the first round evaluation or the second round evaluation. Here, you can see the sub-criteria. They differ depending on uh, whether it's ROA or IOA. There are three overall sections and for each item. The high score would be five. First criteria is excellence. The objective and the originality of the research. Uh, to me, this was very important because uh, the area I'm reviewing is ROA. The methodology was also considered that as well. So the methodology is plausible for implementation, 
Uh, since this is an international research, so the necessity of international research should be elaborated. And that some of the items that I mentioned here are clearly stipulated in your proposal, the, the skeleton of your proposal. So I refer to the basic framework. So, as I mentioned, but it should be uh, for each item or category, uh, at least four or five only, then you can make it all the way to the fund funding. The second is impact and user engagement. And this is the area I could see the difference between Korea and European countries. Diversity and gender are extremely highlighted. Or the researchers' gender were the beneficiaries of the research. And the outcome of the research and the impact and how these can contribute to diversity and gender. There is a separate section, dedicated section, and that this should be uh, in, well incorporated into the proposal and the participation of various stakeholders. The city government NGOs. So the way I evaluated have uh, local authorities and the NGOs were primary partners and the deliverables and the concrete outcome were also viewed very important. The last criteria is quality and efficiency of project implementation, the competencies of the consortium and researchers and since this encompasses researchers and cities of various countries, how to do the coordination, the plan for coordination, budgeting, and the appropriateness of course allocation and budget. Uh, this were also one of the important criteria for evaluation. The first and second items I could see larger variations. And I'll read it. This is where the final score is finalized. What was interesting is that the project for reviews so they got in and uh, one of the reviewers who know who have the highest expertise will to be uh, designated as reporter. And the uh, reporter would uh, summarize the project reviews and then a comprehensive comment, synthesizing all the review opinions. We do the numerical effort. And after typing in the review comment of each reviewer, all the reviewers can just see and read all other reviewer schools. So rather than getting the average, we get the consensus score, let's say for item one, uh, high score would be five, but the, through the discussion, it is a joint decision, how high the score will be or how low the score will be. So we will listen in who has given the high score or the lowest score, and this will what their subject be subject to the adjustment. And each review is assigned with five to ten for proposals. There would be some um, gap or discrepancies in the average scores given by each reviewer. Through this outcome, you can see what, how generous one reviewer can be and how strict one can be. So I could see myself uh, the level of the scores and the ratings I would tend to give uh, 
그래서 대책적으로 너무 좋은 점수를 받으려는 그렇겠지만 어, 이 낮은 점수를 이제 준그 레전얼이 얼마나 강력한지에 따라서 so. 그 consensus score d e p e n d on how strong the person uh, who gives the lowest score would go. That's the difference between the Korean way of evaluation and the European way of evaluation. And to share my personal reflections, as many countries and many organizations took part, take part in. Although I was part of this research-oriented uh, evaluation, uh, contribution to be made by the research is very important. In that sense, coherence or alignment between the selection of target cities and research topics is highly important. If the three cities and three countries form a consortium, what kind of differences they have and how to complement each other, this transnational cooperation should capture that aspect. And the second point is that Considering uh, you should consider that diversity as well as gender, not just in research objectives, but also the processes and the visualization of the results. The participation and roles of various institutions, such as local authorities, NGOs, and private sector. The number of participating institutions is not the primary concern, but the variety of various entities appear to be important, especially the involvement of local authorities. If and there is no local authority involvement, then the reviewer might raise some concern as to the future utilization of the data and so on. And uh, you should make it quite clear that what kind of uh, um, channels you're going to use. Uh, which this means a communication and sharing system among research institutions. Uh, in most of the cases, for one self topic or challenge, most of the participating um, entities work jointly on that challenge. In Korea, if there is one overarching topic and subtopics, then the, you would allocate the subtopics among different organizations, but it's not like that you would jointly work on one same common uh, subtopic that could happen. In, the next one would be utilization of the results and policy contributions. And final consensus process and evaluation results. At least before my review, although I didn't um, write down uh, my feedback or my um, approach, according to the coordinator, I was told that the overall score is higher than in the other years. So A plus means but this should be funded and A, the flat A would be fundable or the funding is recommended. And as for the year, I took part in as a panel. Final selection was made from A plus or A great project, considering inter-country ratios and allocations. So statistics seem to be constantly updated and posted on the website. This is why I believe that could be one of the important criteria. So this is pure, my, purely my personal uh, reflections. 
So this there would be some gap between my first personal reflections and the actual evaluation process. But if you have any questions, please reach out to me at the Q&A session or you can email me. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least. I would like to invite uh, Professor Rusumin of Hongu University who took part in the DUT project last year. Good afternoon. I am Rusumin, a professor at Hongu University. So I was selected for this TUT program, and uh, prior to that, I worked. Um, I studied at the Berkeley, UC Berkeley, and my network that I created back then served as a great basis for obtaining this project. And uh, my area of expertise is this smart mobility engineering. That is why I believe um, I have this close relationship with this, this of a smart and sustainable work culture for the minute city. So, work culture was well, the topic or theme I selected and what kind of work culture we have created by using various technologies in order to realize that the Feminine City has built the consortium. I was a PI and uh, from Watsburg University, a professor of computer engineering with also two part in. And, uh, from Athens Engineering University, we also have a professor of uh, transportation engineering, and we also have a researcher from Heist in Korea. In one city, the local authority was elected to be engaged in the 2023 call text. The Korean local authorities was not supposed to take part in, but the mandatory requirement was to have at least one local authority. And uh, we almost found uh, the city hall of the city government of the Cliff Isle Greece. In addition to that, we have one public open corporation and uh, uh, IT company of uh, Greece. The funding distribution was not equal. And since, as uh, before, the city government, the funding was more, and as for the time, that's for public open they even made a contribution uh, because uh, the dedication and the time contribution would differ among participants. So I think most of the things have already been fully explained, so I'll be very brief and to the point, and something in red and something in uh, black, and something in red uh, that shows how difficult it was what I was supposed to do, what that was the focus of uh, this material. So, the proposal is to be submitted by November. I began to uh, prepare the proposal only one week prior to the deadline. The first two is the international cooperation is of the greatest importance. But uh, let me be honest with you. Sometimes you get in response to the email. We are so lately takes on years, days, and days. Now, even my German partner told me that well, they would get an email response from the government one week after. So, in the pre proposal stage, well, what is important is to put together the key uh, main idea. This was this completion is of greatest importance. And the three of uh, two parts in this DUT program for the first time, and uh, I was not able to find anyone who has an experience in this one. That is why uh, I refer to the whole text as if it is my textbook. It's hundreds of pages of book. 
Um, but uh, if you really look thoroughly into this slide, you can see all the required information, especially for the mandatory requirements for each country. So you can use the country name as a search word. And then after the third tip is the most important. So you have to email the UT Secretarium. So you can ask inquiries, you can ask questions, and then ensure an increase with the UT Secretariat and throughout the progression process. And even uh, nearing the deadline, but we can get the response from the UT Secretariat in a matter of one to two days. So it's very profound, very pragmatic. And as for Greece and Germany, well, the my German partner or a great partner, great partner, but they have their colleagues who have this duty experience. So I got some help and a few friends from my European partners. And the last point is really important. The final decision um, is to be made by DUT Secretariat because the DUT Secretariat is the one who has the final ability and the final say. That is why it's quite important for you to make an inquiry in the DUT Secretariat. Well, forming the conclusion and uh, meeting the eligibility criteria the most difficult task and the most important thing as for eligibility but at the start of the cold concept is transnational and the national two different steps of the eligibility requirements. So, um, so forming a consortium, the meeting all the requirements was the most difficult uh, task so that was as of 2023. But the biggest one for me, the three areas, the first is the participating countries, at least three or more countries to take part in the consortium. The second is two or more EU member countries, and then well, the three communication should be ensured in following the consortium and as highlighted. For the deadline, but I almost panicked because the urban government authority with the local authorities participation is mandatory. So our initially thought that well, the government sponsored company would meet this requirement, but the portal would said no, this does not meet the requirement. Only two days prior to the deadline, we came to see that we should definitely have local authorities. So the communication code will tell you whether this is a local authority or not. So the whole institute for the recent institute of transportation of Korea, well, they are not uh, eligible for this kind of project. That's why we had the city government of Nevada, so the provincial government or the city government should be involved. So the official letters were not required for me, even for a poll that would be required. But what are the intent you need to get for the full proposal at the pre-proposal stage? You will need to have an official document from the local authorities. And the national requirement was very tricky and demanding. In the case of the Netherlands, only University of Applied Sciences were eligible, so my partnership one of the partners, potential partners were not able to join in. Mm -hmm. And then so, uh, that was quite uh, tricky as well. The most difficult one was uh, you have to um, address every detail. Uh, so one of the requirements was identified by the German participant. Um, so our initial budget uh, was that for Korea, it was 100,000 euro, and for Germany, it was 300,000 euros. But you know what? According to this whole test, one country's budget can be up, only up to twice as much as the other country's budget. That is why we adjusted the budget. No, no, we got the confirmation from the DUT Secretariat. So this way, but you can get some help and assistance from the DUT Secretariat. So the, we created a 13-page pre-proposal document. So my approach is that uh, since but this is the consortium of uh, 
for engineering professors in a one city government that members in order to prevent it from becoming too technical. Uh, I'll try to be as comprehensive as possible. Rather than trying to elaborate on a technical methodology, it's only half a page out of the 13 page document. I uh, try to clarify in today's state a research objectives, a plan, and expected benefits and the implications. In line with a theme 15 minute city at the Petro Global Joint Base, other uh, matters but are not really time consuming of research capabilities, education, and so on. Basic information is widely available. And rather than highlighting technological impact, the societal impact was highlighted in my proposal. And the European style proposal for creation, but this is something I'd like to share with you later. As a pre proposal that we do not create any higher proposal, the portal opens quite late, sometime prior to the deadline, and the organization code and through the organization typing in organization code, you can see whether you are eligible or not. So this is how I came to see only two days prior to the deadline that the IT company is not enough for me to have this local authority partner. Since you are to prepare this proposal, here on the right side, you can see um, the, some code from the template in black. That's the title of the section in blue. That's kind of the outline of a very black I believe that one of the match to the criteria, evaluation criteria. That is why if there is any guidelines is specifically given, please stick to that. Since we have the only one local authority in the city hall, that was my concern. And I think uh, we lost some points because we have only one local authority in the city government. Uh, we cover three different cities, but we have only one local authority. That is why alongside a lot of intent, we uh, included some local authorities of Korea as well in order to make up for that. Uh, we subsequently needed to the first round of the evaluation to look onto the full proposal. And, uh, this is something you don't let me know. So I wrote some responsibilities uh, regarding work packets. Uh, uh, actually, that was allocated um, mainly by myself, but because if you discuss that out, uh, it would be too time for me, and we have uh, working at a meeting on a monthly basis in order to push um, back to their boundaries and to push the envelope. And the European style uh, proposal uh, should be prepared to win this project that is why I think they're advised quite uh, actively. Uh, considerations I'd like to share with you. The first is, as mentioned by Professor Sal, the policy analysis and social implications should be considered profoundly. Uh, rather than um, having this as a boilerplate, you have to uh, specifically for the social implications of the of your research project. 
If there is any uh, questions, they describe any skincare risks associated with contingency plans, but the one is that uh, inefficient to communication among and between countries, we, we might uh, not be able to meet the timeline of the research. And the second is that since this is a very technology, although this is a very technology, but one of the risks is there was that the research result would have uh, has the impact only on high income bracket of the society. So this, uh, a social implication or a social portion takes up the lion's pool, the lion's share. The tip I would like to share with you. Uh, the terminologies you might find um, unfamiliar, what well, this refers to in the detailed research task, in the milestone deliverables. Well, this is with expressions you know quite well. The person month, uh, this was quite new to me back then. When we do the budgeting, well, we just set the number of researchers and where we will spend that bunch of money. But for each package, how many people will be put in for how long? It's kind of person month that should be elaborated on each uh, partner. How many person months will be used for each work package? It was in such a detail. Well, in Korea, well, could pay how much you are going to use the print in the unit of Korean one. But in this kind of proposal, it's almost in the unit of person months. But the thing is that regardless of the level of expertise, it's always in the unit of person months. If you put in a student, then one person month. If it's a professor, it's still one person month. So each country has a different level of labor cost. And in Germany, well, the students would get paid even way more than an engineer in Greece. So the each organization took the responsibility for calculating person months. When it comes to funding, there was no feedback whatsoever in this process of the whole proposal. But the feedback from Germany is that the funding adjustment uh, is done internally within Germany. According to the colleague of Germany, in the total per month, um, the participating country should be uh, quite similar. So we try to be, uh, make that at, at a similar level. Each country would have a similar level of person month. And then one of the work package is the dissemination. Uh, it was supposed to be in such a detail. So please refer to this later at your leisure. And uh, another question about uh, IPR, how to manage and address the intellectual property rights. So address the question, although I'm not an expert here, uh, this is not a vague and ambiguous area, but as we film a conclusion, uh, we had a consensus that if the one who is a PI, um, if, uh, if you are a PI, then uh, you will have the IPR for each uh, research task. And uh, each uh, country and each organization would have a different level of requirements when it comes to the full proposal. And so this, depend this depends on the country. And another aspect I'd like to highlight is that since this is an international project, and uh, so many countries tend to part in uh, because uh, so many countries are all part of this project. And the uh, DUT Superior seems to give uh, some wiggle room and flexibility. And the uh, project duration uh, was um, updated later. 
So as long as there is a strong rationale, then you can get the consent from the DUT. So you should fully communicate via email with the DUT secretariat. The email itself was deemed an official. Of course, we have uh, closely communicated with the client staff members in order to get some confirmation and verification of the proposal. So, if you have any further questions, please email me. Thank you. Thank you. I myself I wanted to apply for um, this project uh, when, as I listened to the presentation. So thank you very much. From now on, we will have the Q&A session. Uh, we have some um, the questions uh, shared with us in advance. That's why uh, I'd like to share with you this. So this is the questions that we have received. Uh, so let me go through um, one by one. Is it, um, this is about the budget. Uh, so the budget for 2025 is in D. 300 million Korean won. The maximum possible budget to the project is about 350 million Korean won for, for DUT for up to 36 months, and there is no specific limit for CET. No, within 36 months, up to 300 million Korean won is recommended. And now, the consortium partners, uh, which country? Uh, would be recommended whether the University of the UK in the countries with larger funding budgets and good research outcomes in the DUT program have higher possibilities. Um, Germany, Italy, Spain, Austria have, the, have larger funding. That means they have more money to distribute and roll out. That means if we form a consortium with one of those countries, we ha would have slightly higher possibilities. But uh, according to some uh, feedback, if you form a partnership and consortium with Lithuania, Lithuania or a cold test, uh, there is a list of countries and the cold test code is referred to that. Okay, you can work with the university, but uh, the funding type and the support type would differ country by country. Please refer to the cold test. So to participate in the Urban Innovation Partner category with a project on improving user travel through modifications to traffic signal control infrastructure, depending on the research content between consortia, it is basically possible to participate in the 15 minute city topic. The question is how can, how can we protect against the technology that? For DUT, if selected and consortium agreements must be submitted as a first year deliverable, when concluding the agreement and negotiating the agreement, you should include clauses to protect against the technology theft. So, the full the funding provided by and contributed by Korea that will be spent on the Korean research activities, the position agreement should be negotiated, the CA should be negotiated, and the CET, uh, for the CET project participation, but the proposal should be written in English, a pre-proposal should be up to 15 pages, and that should be written in English. And uh, the year by year research content uh, that's work package that depends on the consortium agreement. And there is a template uh, within the announcement link. So please refer to that. And um, this is uh, the interpretation uh, will not be provided anymore. Uh, thank you for joining us today. The Korean session will continue, but English. Interpretation won't be provided any further. Thank you very much for your participation.